Hello everyone, this is Don Shanahan and welcome to another edition of Movie Classroom, the video review series on YouTube using the interactive whiteboard app. As part of the uh, as part of my website, everymoviehaslesson.com. Uh, this particular episode is going to review It Comes at Night. Uh, for me, this is a four star out of five star film, uh, a real kind of buried treasure situation kind of film that you would um, that I think for those of you who maybe are having some blockbuster fatigue can really gravitate to this summer as uh, as some counter programming. It is not a traditional horror film by any means, and I'll, I'll kind of get to that as we go. But um, here is my review of It Comes at Night. Let me set the stage for you. An emotional woman in a gas mask is hugging an ill, elderly man tightly in an effort to say goodbye. The man, covered in lesions and straining for breath, is her father. Her teen son takes a moment to attempt similar closure for something both he and we do not fully understand. The older gentleman's fate when he is taken outside the house and into the woods begins the haunting dread that cloaks Trey Edward Schultz's It Comes at Night, a superb cerebral test of mental fortitude following his breakout film of Krisha a year ago. Eschewing any steady intravenous drips of exposition, something bigger and apocalyptic is at play. An airborne viral contagion with sudden physical science has crippled society and civilization to the point where people are scattered and scrounging for resources and safety. A man by the name of Paul, played by Golden Globe nominee Joel Edgerton, is a patriarch of one family, which includes the previously introduced wife named Sarah, played by Selma's Karma Ijogoba, uh, Ijogos, and his son, Travis, uh, fast-rising newcomer Kevin Harrison Jr., uh, the two people you meet in that initial scene. Through strict routines and precautions, the rightfully paranoid Paul is trying to maintain safety and domestic order inside their expansive, boarded-up woodland home during these dangerous times. Their minuscule amount of hopeless solace is interrupted by the arrival of an unsick intruder named Will, played by the superb Christopher Abbott from James White, trying to find food and water. The family takes pity on the man when they discover he has a wife, played by Riley Keough, and young son Griffin Robert Faulkner, um, waiting away in his own home. Paul invites Will and his family to stay with them and merge resources against the unseen possibilities of peril. Uh, this is definitely kind of a, not necessarily a mano y mano kind of um, head game kind of film, but Joel Edgerton and Christopher Abbott are a welcome yet uneasy alliance of characters and talents. Edgerton continues to expand his resume of stalwart performances after loving Midnight Special and his own directorial and starting efforts in The Gift in the last two years. Concurrently, Abbott deserves a bigger audience springboard after the indie gem and festival darling James White and this equally solid performance here. However, this is not entirely about a plight of fathers. Our chief observer through all this suspenseful vulnerability is Kevin Harris Jr.'s is Travis. His visualized nightmares voyeuristic presence and mounting fear soaks much of the lantern-lit atmosphere in this film. The young actor shoulders the burden very well. Though the film is marketed as a horror film, Drew Daniels' natural and static cinematography is paced by the unnerving musical score of Brian McAlmber to brew a foundation of madness that is lean and sharply conceived from credit to credits without cheesy gore or debilitating tropes. Take the title of this film whatever you, whatever you wish it to be, be it literally with the lurking threats of nightfall in this landscape, or figuratively with the visions and nightmares one has while alone with their thoughts before sleeping. It Comes at Night is tightly comprised of excruciating moral challenges that escalate with time. One might ask how someone can convincingly convey jarring grimness such as this. Creators, in this way, often cull from dark personal places as an outlet and an answer to their need to express and create the difficult material they convey in projects like It Comes at Night. That is entirely the case here, and it is a, and it is a place not everyone is going to be comfortable visiting at the multiplex. Schultz, Schultz conceptualized It Comes at Night during a time of grieving, anxiety, and agitation after losing his father to pancreatic cancer, a man he was distant with before the end. Uh, in in Q&A, in a Q&A session following um, a screening I was lucky to see in Chicago, um, Mr. Schultz went extensively into kind of his background and influences. When you hear his story and you hear his take, and knowing the, those roots of inspiration, 
really greatly aids in digesting and appreciation, appreciating, I should say, this cinematic presentation. The entire film occupies a murky place of disquiet that is mesmeric and captivating all the same. It Comes at Night operates with purposeful mystery to respect and challenge the audience, the intelligence of his audience to piece together its many open-ended, unanswered questions. Even with a fair bit of uneasy head-scratching, our minds fill in the blanks of the unseen and suggested likely in darker and more personal ways than any film can achieve explicitly. There is unmistakable power in that found in Schultz's film. That's kind of my take on It Comes at Night, and you know me. My signature life lessons are what I use to close my reviews, and I have three. Lesson number one, and it's kind of the mantra within the film and the main character, Joel, is trust family above all others. Both Paul and Will, impressively through Joel and Christopher, express the rattled resolve of desperate fathers seeking to shield their families. That's what fathers do. When the rest of society breaks down, family becomes your closest connection to any kind of, or even just that shred of humanity. In a sense, it's all that matters, and one should protect it. Lesson number two is the brutal effects of paranoia. This is a horror film completely built on fear more than gore. In this cataclysmic setting, processing the threats to survival and the fears of fatal sickness, all of which are unknown in their source and effects. There's not exposition here that just kind of happily gives us an epilogue or a prologue of what's going on. Um, when, those th when you're in those situations, those triggers will drive good folks, good folks insane. Paranoia on that level is, ne is nearly, if not completely, dehumanizing, even when it's rightful. It turns people on each other in completely brutal ways. Lesson number three, because you, this kind of shuffles back to the dark place where Schultz wrote this film, and the idea is the fragility of mortality. When people die for unexplained reasons, whether it be maybe that man at the beginning of this story or a character in this film, it emphasizes how delicate life is and how quickly it can be taken from people when they're not expecting it. Couple that tension with the aforementioned paranoia, and minds can race with those worrisome thoughts of death and mortality. Uh, the helplessness that follows can paralyze just about any or even the strongest soul. That's my take for It Comes at Night. Uh, it's a fantastic counter-programming, uh, suspenseful thriller. I can't call it a horror film, um, but it is definitely a diamond in rough and another absolute hit from A24. That's been my review. Please look, uh, if you want to read what I just kind of <laughs> said to you out loud, or if you want to see more of my reviews, look me up on everymoviehasalesson.com. You can also use that title to search for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and etc. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.